My name is Wasting Insanity, and happy 4th of July! Yes, I'm being very daring, and I'm making a recording on the 4th of July. It's kind of later in the evening now, and fireworks haven't started yet. It's not dark out, so that's probably why. But, this is my current state, Ark Survival Evolved. If you haven't seen my, at a glance, on Ark, make sure to go take a look. I'll put it up right there. Wait for it. Alright, you should have got it by now. Now that you've watched it or have already seen it before, basically, you know what Ark is. It's a survival game with dinosaurs. <whistles> dinosaurs. Hopefully my whistle wasn't too loud. Please keep in mind that Ark is currently in the alpha stage. Out of the gate, Ark had a lot of problems that were over-exaggerated by players. A lot of players were claiming that they had higher-end machines, but they were unable to run the game. They were saying that you need a supercomputer to run it. NASA themselves apparently reported that the game was unplayable. But this is not the case. I picked up my machine a few years ago, and it's almost time for me to upgrade it. But I was still able to run the game. If you want to see the specs on my machine, I'll put the link up here. <laughs> Ark Survival Evolved is a typical survival game, mixed with dinosaurs and some high-tech weaponry. Players can tame dinosaurs and ride them, craft weapons all the way up to machine guns, and currently the end game involves acquiring a variety of certain resources to summon a boss type monster. From a giant spider that summons little spiders to a massive dragon. One of the things that sets the game apart from your typical survival game is that your character levels up and receives skill points. These skill points are used to purchase engrams, or blueprints, for crafting. The developers have stated that at maximum level, not one player will have enough skill points to purchase all of the engrams. But there are crate drops with blueprints the players can store in their home to fill in the gaps. There is PvP, PvE, and single player available. The PvP game currently favors large tribes, not just because of the number of people in the tribe, but there is a shared XP system in play that allows large tribes to level up quicker than a player who solos. At launch, the game felt balanced even with this issue. If you look at some of my previous videos where I have a trike and I am destroying homes around mine, you will notice that the solo player was something to be feared, at least in the early. After a series of patches, this is not so much the case anymore. A trike trying to destroy a wooden sign, that's right, a wooden sign, starts to knock itself out before this was not the case. They gave all the dinosaurs glass jaws. In the mid to late game, it is impossible for a solo player to really be a threat anymore. This mostly has to do with the fact that there is a resource that's needed for mid to late game crafting in order to progress in the game. Currently. The only real area you can farm it seems to be in caves. They also made it so that players are more reliant on dinosaurs than they are on their characters. Certain dinos harvest certain things better than other dinos, but all the dinos harvest things better than the player characters. This forces players to take a lot of time, resources, and effort to tame dinos. In some cases, I would understand in other cases, I feel the player would be able to rival a dino when it comes to how much meat it can harvest compared to what a dinosaur would get. Because a player is using tools where a dinosaur is just basically chomping on the other dino. Speaking of tools, the tools a player uses break easily. I would expect the metal tool to last a lot longer than what it currently does. But as I stated, the rare resources can be found in caves which happen to be locked off by tribes. Tribes could possibly go to war over these caves. Tribes that build in the caves, though, have an advantage. They don't need to build a home, no walls or ceiling. They just have to build gates, giant metal gates blocking off their cave. On my server, I was near one tribe that did just that. When they were ready to push out, they created a massive wall that locked off half of the valley. The following day, they started to create a massive structure I am sure the bulk of their resources sit comfortably behind the many metal gates in the cave. A few things to note. The game is rather grindy, especially in the later game. If you thought other games had a grind, 
Okay, you get a load of this one. When crafting becomes unrealistic, on some level, just to make the game artificially difficult, that just isn't good game design. For example, it takes more metal to create a rifle than it does to create a metal wall. Instead of requiring additional resources, up the crafting time to compensate for the delicate work involved. Since we can craft something in a smithy and walk away while it finishes, this shouldn't be much of an issue. Currently, a player with a flying dinosaur can easily raid a home as they skip defenses below. They can even bypass detection from players that are offline by not killing anyone or any pet. They merely come in, break storage containers, and leave with what they want. There are no notifications for when a player attacks a home, only notifications for when another player attacks the player and kills him, or a pet. This means that false alliances can work. So a player can ally themselves, then sneak into the base of the opposing player without them ever realizing that it was their friend next door. And a week later they do it all over again because they gave their friend time to restock. This makes it rather difficult too impossible for a solo player to really play this game without running into this issue, since you cannot be online all the time. I personally enjoy the solo player experience because it is more difficult, but unfortunately the game is far from friendly to a solo player. If you are looking for a game where you are rewarded for grouping up and or playing with your friends, this may just be the game for you. Just remember to make your tribe as big as possible in order to have the best advantage. But if you want a solo, I would have to recommend against getting this title currently. PvP has been patched enough to give the larger tribes a big advantage. And resources are just not there for the solo player. Even as a solo player who established good relations with my neighbors, it reached a point to where the large tribe nearby was passively aggressive towards me taking resources around my home when there were plenty of resources elsewhere. This established a trend where the supposedly friendly tribe was not so friendly, even though they had offered to bring me into their tribe. I declined the invite because I wanted to experience this game from a solo player's perspective. Eventually, I believe they raided part of my home while I was offline. But this was just the nail in the coffin for me as I had grown quite bored with the grind of the endgame. They really should have called this game Dino Rancher, because it felt like I really needed to get those dinosaurs going. Overall, I give this title, in its current state, a 6 out of 10. It may rise up to a 7 or 8, but that probably won't be until it's completed, which is slated for next year. But that is only if you're willing or wanting to group. From the solo player's standpoint, this game is a 4 out of 10, mainly due to the fact that this game is a group game, and there was no real notice or warning on the Steam page that stated grouping was required in order to PvP. Raiding doesn't personally bother me, but rebounding after a raid, especially if you are in the late game, that can be rather annoying, especially when the resources are just currently unavailable in large quantities in the game. My name is Wasting Sanity. I want to thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And don't forget to follow me here and Twitter and on Steam, Steam group called Wasting Sanity's Review. Thank you.